Welcome to the Theory of DFS podcast. I'm Jordan Cooper, the co-author of the Theory of DF, the, the Theory of Daily Fantasy Sports. It's a 15-hour audio DFS masterclass you can pick up at theoryofdfs.com. Join with me, Neil Orfield from awesomeo.com, uh, as well as someone that uh, from your Twitter timeline uh, can't stand Patrick Cantley. Accurate, yeah. Guy ruined my Sunday. He ruins everyone's Sunday. It did. I haven't played Apparently. PGA in a, a while. Typically, it's Patrick Cantlay, it's uh, it's Gary Woodland, it's Tony Finau, it's Keegan Bradley. If you go way back, I I, I find uh, that the people that ruin your your Sundays are the guys that are like that rate very well in in approach. Like typically, typically in PGA DFS, if you if you if you look at any like model, like the the most. Like, if you're a good at approach player, like, you could hit green, you could basically hit greens, you're more likely to, you know, make the cut and do well. And then putting is just so high variance. So you get guys like Luke List who are like, oh, great at approach, can't putt worth the shit, right? And you just hope they have to, you know, putt well. Uh, I, I can't, can't lay, from my so, experience, tends to be one of those types of guys. Yeah, so I, I know literally nothing about golf. I've been playing, just kind of going, using the Top Golfers tool, listening to the Awesome Podcast. I literally, I was on vacation when I made these lineups. I listened to the podcast on 2x speed, looked at the Top Plays tool and kind of adjusted projections while I did it. It took me under an hour, so I can't say that I put a ton of thought into this or that I uh, deserve to win over people who knew what they were doing. I will say I was, I don't even know how to track golf, really. So I I'm, I'm know that I'm sweating Patrick Cantlay. And so the way that I'm tracking it is searching Patrick Cantlay on Twitter and looking for the latest updates. And all I'm seeing is some guy who calls himself like Cantlay Tracker. And every time it's like perfect swing by Cant, perfect drive by Patrick Cantlay, <laughs> setting himself up to really take off here. And then the next tweet will be five minutes later. Okay, he missed that putt. Or, or I'll see five more in between people being like, wow, Patrick Cantlay can't putt for shit. And like, yeah, so so I think my one my one day of following him, uh, you're... you're what you're saying is accurate. Seems seems to be accurate. You didn't download the PGA app? You could follow on like the PGA leaderboard shot tracker. I didn't. I had that at one point, and it was really nice. Uh, it, I didn't get the impression that it was available for this one. Maybe maybe it was. Well, maybe it wasn't available for this event. I have no idea. I'm just I I haven't played PGA DFS in a long time. But also there's there's a that uh, there's a there are birdie and bogey accounts. I know Roto Grinders has one that that you could just any bogey and any birdie whatever it'll just be in your timeline you know just okay. it'll update the scores if you if you if you want if you want that but uh yeah. but that that PGA that PGA DFS sweat is uh like like you could be you could be in first place after the cut and then not even cash on Sunday and yeah. vice versa pretty much I, I was I was in first place halfway through the day on Sunday I'm looking at the the uh, data golf thing and mm-hmm. I have my, my top five golfers combined, according to them, have approximately an 80% chance of one of them winning the tournament. So I'm like, if one of these guys wins, I'm looking really good here. Obviously, I need, I can't have all the other guys completely flop, but I was thinking I'd be in, in a pretty good spot to place pretty well. And of course, all of them, you know, five of them, 80% chance to get first. None of them finished in the top three. Uh, and I, I finished, I, I ended up making $75 on the tournament. So, so it, what was first place? 200000 Oh, so so you you went from some being up over two hundred thousand dollars to yeah. you made seventy five dollars total on the entire tournament. Correct. Welcome to PGA DFS. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like I've been baptized. Right. Uh, I mean, have you been playing PGA DFS for that long? I mean, no. or you just I've do been, it on occasion or something? I mean, what made you decide to I, play this event? I started playing a little bit last year just because I started finding that it is fun and even without knowing much, you can do pretty well. I and mean, we just saw shit my money won 150000 the other week. Uh, and, you know, I finished third in a tournament a few weeks ago, which was, again, I barely made money on the slate. Um, but so I, I guess I found that you can make money without really knowing a whole lot just by kind of going with the same approach that you take with sports that I do know. Um, mm. I still think, you know, I think it would probably help a little bit to know a little bit more about the golfers, maybe, to, to at least have an idea of uh, how the odds work. But typically, I think the top golfers tool on Osmo probably can tell me that. So, yeah, I've been playing. It's, it's a fun, I enjoy it. Uh, it's just something you can kind of track for. It's a slow burn. Uh, I like I like when there's, you know, two cuts or, or when, when there is a cut, I should say. Um, so you get two sweats. Yeah, but, but sometimes, sometimes after the cut, you have no six out of six lineups, and you're just like the, for the next two days, 
Why yeah. is this still on my screen? Like, I just don't want to be yeah. reminded that it's like, okay, either I'm losing 60% of my money or 80% of my money, but it's not going to be anything It's anything better than that. Yeah. I mean, this this is my first real sweat. I, I mean, I mentioned I got third the other week, but I was tied with, like, three other lineups, and it was only, I think, 100000 at first. So best case scenario was I would win, like, 50,000 and that was pretty unlikely and I never I think got to first place so that wasn't a real sweat this is the first time that I've been like I think I've got a real shot to win this one and it was it was very fun you know the thing about making PGA lineups is that like there's really no correlation I mean like there's no like like some people think that course history matters some people think that course fit matters some people think course form some people the tee times if there's weather or whatever right well that's some correlation right yeah. yeah, well, only in very, very, like, insane situations. And right. then even then, like, oh, it's supposed to be windy in the morning. And then it's like, it's not, oh, it's not windy until it's off by four hours. Yeah, it's just unpredictable. Right. So, well, like, like really... right. So, if you're going to play PGA DFS, to me, like, if you, you could you could build 150 lineups and in an hour or less and be like, okay, I think that's good. I think that's good enough. Yeah. I mean, like, like that, that's what, exactly I, what I did. Yeah. Right. And it was, I mean, it was good enough to give me a sweat. So what more can you really hope for? You got me made $75. For a little bit of luck. Yeah, I made $75. $75 like, for an hour worth of work. Right. That's, that's not bad. That's not that's not bad yeah. at all. Imagine you could do that well, eight hours a day every day. I got a lot of heartbreak to go with it. So I could have done without that. If I had just not watched, I would have, you know, looked at it again and been like, all right, I did pretty well. Uh, unfortunately, yesterday I got to a point where I was like, I think I got a real shot to win this thing or at least come near the top. And, and I mean, I guess I finished, I don't know, 15th or something, but uh, steak knives, some some nice steak knives. Right, $75 steak knives. There you go. Yep. Uh, no, I, I, the same same for me in MMA. I mean, it's a, to me, it's the similar type of sweat in MMA where yep. you, could, you could go from like, I got a chance at the nuts. I, I think I think in MMA, it's, 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 it's MMA, I think, is more uh, fatalistic. Like, I think in, in PGA... Or maybe it's more fit. Like, it, I think in PGA, you could talk yourself into as long as you have like a six out of six after the cut, you could talk yourself into this lineup being the winner, yeah. right? There, 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 there's a there are chances depending on how old some of the golfers are. In MMA, sometimes, sometimes at literally after like it's it's thirteen fights, and after like the third or fourth fight, you could look and go. I have no lineup that can make the nuts. Yeah. Like I, I just, I, I literally have that. There's like I have to hope that no one has the optimal in order for me to win first place in this. And then you try to find well, if no one has this, and not, but typically, almost every lineup combination, unless a lot of low percent own guys win, and it's leaving three thousand on the table. Most of the time, someone has kind of the nut lineup, and you know it always, it always sucks. Like. uh, when when it's the third fight and it's like a guy you're playing 150 lineups and you have him in like eight lineups and the guy puts up 140 points and you're like well I got eight lineups that could be live and then you look at the eight lineups and it contains yeah. one of the losers from the first three fights and yeah. you're like I guess I'm just watching for entertainment purposes now I've been there in the few times that I played MMA I've definitely been out of it very early well it's easy no. I mean if, if you I mean if you're playing only like one lineup or something like that. I mean, you you could literally be dead to win within 15 seconds of an MMA slate. Yeah. Like, I mean, that like, there's no other, I don't know if there's any other sport that's like that. That you could be dead to win. I mean, I guess we had that Isaiah Jackson situation, right? Yeah. You can get those occasionally where somebody's just injured immediately, but it's pretty rare. When uh, they, uh, they knew that they would shock, right? <laughs> right, right. Right. It had to be like, there's going to be on the entire slate, it's like a slate of nine games and it's like, okay, the guy that's the, the most, the 60% on guy gets injured on the first play of the game. Yeah. And then did, did you see the, the conspiracy theory posts on, on Twitter with FanDuel? Oh, yeah. It went from uh, 50% on to 49.9 or something. Right, right. Which means they were allowing, they were allowing, obviously, the, the hooked up players. Reminds to, me of Condia. Back in the day, people were making this thing about Condia all the time. Right. They were allowing them after lock to, to, to swap out the injured player. Pretty unfair, right? Pretty unfair. Not not that the fact that their actual ownership was forty nine point nine nine, and it just right. displayed by an uh, an estimate up, right? You know, just round they rounded it up, and then they didn't, right? And like, 
I, 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 from, from what, what I know, from what I think at least, from what I've been told, uh, that's that's the any adjustment to ownership like that is due to unfilled lineups. Hmm. So, for instance, if, the, if there's a hundred thousand people in the contest, entries in the contest, like it'll when it locks, it'll determine the ownership based on a hundred thousand entries. But maybe there's three hundred entries that are like reserved and not filled in. Yep. That once they that factor those in, obviously it decreases the player the size, and then the guy is slightly less owned because it's, you're now dividing by ninety nine thousand seven hundred instead of a hundred thousand. Yeah, but apparently on well, Reddit and on certain Twitter threads, uh, that's clear evidence that FanDuel is allowing people to cheat, and there should be a class action lawsuit against them. Yeah, I mean, why not sue, sue FanDuel for all for all I care? Go ahead. Right, you're gonna bring to Good court luck. Isaiah J- instead I- J- Isaiah Jackson evidence. Yeah. So I, I didn't play that. I didn't play all of last week. Oh, after, you didn't? Why? The, Where were you were like on vacation Sunday. or something? I was. I was in Arizona, so I went to Arizona for the tournament of champions. And you didn't. And you didn't. You didn't win that. I didn't win that. I uh, had a, had a very brief sweat. Uh, at one point, whistles go woo, and I, you know, we, we thought we both have a pretty good chance. We we swapped twenty thousand dollars equity if either of us won first, uh, and then within like a minute or two after that, somebody passed me who had Odell Beckham Jr. and it was like, oh, this guy has me completely blocked. So, uh, did you yeah, make money? Did whistles? Did whistles do well? Uh, whistles uh, did not do that well. He did, he didn't pass me. I don't believe. I, so okay, I so yeah, it didn't it didn't matter either way. It didn't matter. Yeah. So what are those yep, considerations? I think, I, I think that brings up a good good thing that m- most people may not encounter. This this comes from poker, more yep. than anything else, where you see you swap equity. Uh, yeah, I've never done it before, so I, I can't claim to be an expert on it. But yeah, let's talk about it. Do do you okay? I, I just just to understand what it is first. So some people may be like, I don't know, yep. understand what that means. Uh, swapping equity means that like let's say let's say me and you make a live final. Or it doesn't even have to be a live final. It could be tonight's NBA contest, right? Right. Like, you're going to put in 150. I'm going to put in 150. It's 2250 a piece in. And we decide amongst yourselves to swap 10% equity. Which means that if you, if whatever you win, I get 10% of. And whatever I win, you get 10% of. Right? And it's a, it's a, it's a hedge out type of thing. So you could be like, you know... Uh, uh, I respect you as a player. You respect me as a player. We're building lineups individually, separately from each other. We don't know what we're doing, but we're going to swap some some equity. In poker tournaments, people would do that and be like, "Yeah, oh, it's a thousand person poker tournament." You know, you're you're there with some buddies or people that you respect, and you're like, "Let's all swap ten percent." Or it could be you get backers, right? It's very similar, like stake kings, right? You get a backer. It's like, "Oh, I'm going to cover twenty percent of your entry for twenty percent of your equity." A lot of times, you give points. Or something like 20%, you know, you pay for 20%, but you get 17% of the equity, you know, there's some markup or something. Uh, yeah. my, my question, I mean, number one, you, you, you can do that. I, this, this is, this is my, my opinion. I, uh, that if it's after the contest has started, I think that's absolutely fine. But I think before the contest start, I don't think it should, I, I think that should be a, a if it, if it could be proven, which probably can't be, uh, yeah. a terms of service violation. Really? So I, I this is the first time that I've actually ever done it. I've talked about it with uh, RBX88 a couple times before, uh, specifically about the, these live, live finals. He brought it up before the Tournament of Champions last year. And at the time, I was kind of like... Is this sketchy? I've never heard of this before because I didn't. I'm not from the poker world. I had never heard of this before, and ultimately it was kind of like I, I didn't want to deal with the tax implications, and I didn't want to. Right. Do, I didn't want the headache. Essentially, I, I didn't think the amount that we would be swapping was was worth the headache, so I declined uh, last year. And we talked about it actually again this year, me and RBX88 before the tournament, and ultimately decided against it um, for the same reason. And then, of course, get some alcohol in me. It's pretty late in the second game. We've been drinking open bar all day. Whistles brings it up to me because we, at that point, I mean, we, we knew each other's lineups. There's nine minutes left in the game. We could see exactly where we both were. Um, and so then he brought up, he's like, hey, do you want us, you know, cut 20%? Uh, or sorry, uh, twenty thousand dollars. Just swap twenty thousand dollars if one of us wins, uh, just to add a little bit to the sweat. And so we did that. Right. Um, and a lot of times, but, I could I could understand like like I mean, it's very rare in DFS because it would be hard to coordinate or something. That 
like in MMA would be a, like a good example where there's a distinct last like fight. And like if, for instance, it was a very binary result of like, if I was in first place and the guy in second place, you know, something like that, where it's like, if this guy wins, I win. And if that, if the other guy wins, the other guy wins, that we could just basically make an agreement and go, why don't we just, why don't we chop it? I mean, you do that, then poker, you could do that, right? Like what, and, and yeah. we, we, instead of playing it out, the last two head to head, it's just like, just chop first place. Or sometimes it's done by chip count, right? 60, 40, let's just chop it based on chip count. Uh, I can understand that because it'd be like, especially in these hot top heavy GPPs, it's like hundred thousand a first, thirty thousand a second, you know. And you'd be like, uh, well, why don't we just sixty five thousand a piece? No matter who wins, right? Sixty five thousand a piece, and obviously the tax stuff you'd have to take care of. That's a little bit of a headache. Uh, yeah. But the thing is, is that at that moment, like I think, I think any anything goes at that moment. Yeah. But before the the slate starts. Even though you could say that, you uh, know, like, uh, well, we're going to split 25%. It's like, well, what happens if your strategy is very similar to my strategy? I mean, like, this right. this happened to me uh, before. This way back in, like, 2016, maybe, uh, where I got it, or 17, two, no, 2017, I believe. Uh, it was like a $1,500 contest in soccer. Now back then I wasn't playing fifteen hundred dollar contests in any in anything. I didn't have the bankroll for that. But I won a satellite ticket or whatever like that. And uh, another uh, DFS soccer player that I'm friends with, uh, Evaldo Basso. Uh, then we talked on DM. I mean, I I, I visited him in Chicago before. Uh, he he had he had like he had, he could enter whatever he wants. He makes like a million bucks a year. He he, he doesn't even play for like the money. Uh, and but he respects my play and I respect his play. So he said said uh why don't we uh it sw- basically split it. So right cuz especially since I don't play at at that level. So it's like your entry and my entry we just whatever comes out we just split the split the money. Uh the and but the problem came in I mean ethically. There was no problem, but the ethics mm-hmm. of it was that it was like a, maybe a six game Champions League slate and I don't remember who. Maybe it was Andre Silva. I don't know. You don't know these people. Uh, no. I was going to play some low-owned forward, right? So it's like, I want to take a shot on this. This is how I'm differentiating. Because it's only like a 100-man contest. It's not a large field thing. Uh, yep. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm taking a shot. I'm fading the chalk forward and playing this, you know, 6% owned forward. And uh, this is bef- before the slate locked. And I, I told him, like, I'm, I'm going to play Andre Silva or whatever the hell it was. Yep. Uh, and he, his response was, I, I was thinking the same thing, but since you're doing it, right. I'm not because we're, but we're both splitting. Well, the, the problem came in because you talked about it. Right. Well, yeah, the problem came it. in because we would normally, we, we would normally sometimes talk. It's like, uh, <coughs> I'm going to take a shot on this and maybe I go, yeah, I don't think that's a good idea. I'm not, I'm not that risky or I'm not, I'm doing, I'm doing something different. I mean, it, it's like, has, has it, it's like how any DFS player talks to one another. We could talk to each right. other before the NBA slate tonight and go, I'm going overweight on this. And you're like, oh, I'm going underweight. I mean, like, it's just like yeah. any type of strategy talk. But in the fact that we were technically partners, isn't right. it, on, is, wouldn't it be some type of, isn't it some form of collusion? Yeah. We're not purposely doing just a matter of like, oh, I had that same idea, but since you're doing it, I'm not going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to waste the entry because we'll be to our lineups will look too similar to each other yeah. and we want two it shots puts, to win. And at that moment, I'm like, why the, the, this, this doesn't fi- this, this feels like, col- this, this feels like it should yeah. be collusion, even though it's so easy to do. Right. right. Especially in lot. It's like, oh, we would normally cool. talk about this. I mean, you're doing a mock living, right? That's, that's kind of the, the mock loving issue is right. But that's a three beat that that's a, that's a three man contest. And that, that's, yeah. that's much more, that's, yeah, that's it's much, much more. Uh, right. Yeah. Uh, right. I, cause I didn't even know what he was playing in the rest of his lineup either. I mean, it's not, it's not like we should even shared yeah, yeah. lineups. It's just a matter of like, uh, I'm taking a shot on this guy and it's like, Oh, that was the guy that I was going to take a shot on. And it's like, I'm not going to do that. And like, that's literally, I don't know what else he was going to play. He didn't know what else I was going to play. It's a large enough slate that our, our lineups ended up being like four, five, four, four, five, five, fives, regardless of it. But 
it stands it stands to reason that if 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 you are splitting equity in a contest like that, shouldn't shouldn't it doesn't it make sense that even to remove the perception of you know an unfair advantage or some type yeah. of collusion like oh I know, even if I knew like there's a hundred people in the contest and he shows me his lineup but don't I have more information that other people in the contest don't have yeah, and it's only true. due to the fact that we're sharing equity that he's sharing me this lineup like yep. that's why I said after the fact once everything locks. Get together with all hundred yeah, people in the contest and split the whole prize, believe in whatever way you want, right. regardless. Like it doesn't doesn't matter at that point. So do, yeah. do you think do you think I'm 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 being too nitpicky or or I'm no, making I, it some I, valid point? I think you're making a valid point. I think that anytime you are putting the rest of the field at a disadvantage uh, in a way that is not really within I, I guess it's not totally Against, I don't know if it's against the rules. I don't, I don't know if it's technically against the rules, but I agree with you that there is a little bit of an ethical dilemma there because you are. Is uh, is it is it Neil? Is would it make a difference if the same conversation happened and we weren't splitting equity? Um, yeah, I feel like you can have that conversation if you're not splitting equity and there's no issue there. I mean, people talk strategy all the time. Right, right. Because his long. reaction, because his reaction wouldn't have been. I'm not. I, I'm not going to take a right. shot on oh, that well, guy because you are. Because he would just yeah. say, I, "I'm doing that also, right?" Like, like yeah. he's he's thinking like, "I'm trying to win. You're trying to win." So, yeah. like, if we're both thinking the same thing, then good luck. Hopefully, one of right. us, right? Whoever wins, wins. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it's definitely a, an interesting ethical dilemma because it's not very clearly outside of the rules, but I think it probably breaks some rule in the DraftKings terms of service to do it beforehand i don't it, it might even to you know the way whistles and i were doing it where it was after all the lineups are locked there's yeah but that to me that's not that, that to me that's there's no question that that's fine even within the i think there's no question that it's fine ethically but are you do you have no question that it doesn't break the DraftKings terms of service no because whatever might, you, you know, do with your money after you get it is whatever i mean yeah, what does it matter? There's no, there's nothing you could do that could affect the contest. Literally everything is locked. It's the, it's paramount to you and Whistles saying to each other, "Hey, after the contest, I'm going to give you fifty thousand dollars." And you go, "Okay." I mean, like what, like, like what, what does that matter? Like, no, no, no decision, no nothing was made beforehand. So feel free to do whatever the hell you want. Yet you win. If you win a million dollars, I'm going to give you a quarter of it. Okay. I mean, like you could do whatever. I mean, what? I don't. That's why I said that. I don't think there's any question. When after the contests of Locke and just before Locke, I mean, I brought this up before. I mean, this is this is this is from like five years ago, and I think I've I've discussed this on a podcast or two, and a lot of the reaction was like, "You're being too nit," like, 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 dude. That oh, sometimes the reaction is, "Well, there's way more collusion going on than just that." That well, that, yeah, is, sure that, that is that is that that that. Do whatever, do whatever you want. Like, like, dude, there's no problem with that. But I personally think there. I personally. It put me in a bad position. It's like, like if he if he would have just said, "Oh, I was never thinking about playing that guy," like I then I wouldn't have feel, felt as bad. But the fact that he was like, like I was planning on playing this lineup, but I'm now changing my lineup because I know who you're one of the players that you're playing in your lineup. To me, that's to me that's that's un, that that even if, even if it's only marginal, that really well, also I'd rather it that, if that's going to be unfair. Then it, it covers any other type. Of, like if that's the tolerance level, that means like there's yeah. no, there's no question that anything else would be considered to be you know unfairly so, collusive. So so one more question that I have then it, was he maxing out the contest? Was it a single entry or was it a contest where you could have you know thirty entries? And he no no it was it was a, it was a, it was a qualifier satellite like whatever it wasn't okay because I'm I'm thinking that if you you know talked about it and together your combined lineups went over the max for that contest that might be where you run into an issue more so than if you if you didn't go over that limit no no that that wasn't the case for that contest at all no okay it was more like he had one lineup and i had one lineup and it's like like hey since i don't play at fifteen hundred dollars it's like why don't we just split why don't we just split whatever and it turns out my lineup came in third so wow i decided to send him a forty five hundred dollar check uh, but, uh, but it was basically due to the point of like, I wasn't at the bankroll level where like, if I could hedge out some and reduce my, 
variants like that would that would be beneficial for me so you know sure yeah, yeah I, it would have been 10 grand instead of uh you know instead of what for 45 5500 cuz we cuz we f- figured out the taxes and so basically i like like whatever the taxes would be i took out and then sent them a check for whatever the rest is uh okay. but it's like i wasn't intending on like there was no there was no collusion there was no in- it wasn't being done intentionally or anything and that's right. what that's what so many other people told me it's like no you what's wrong people talk about what they're going to play all the time right yeah yeah but talk about what you're going to play while you're also you know, sharing equity. Like right. the difference between like state kings is like you're 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 almost anonymously doing it. So it's like there's nothing like if people buy shares of you or something and you don't even know who they are, there's no way to like the people that are buying shares of you are also playing in the contests and you tr- like I don't I don't think I don't think what what I did is that big of a deal, but it's enough where I wouldn't even want to have that perception. Yeah. So about state kings how, what percentage of, or no, not even what percentage, how many people that are involved in state kings do you think are plus EV for the people who bet on them? Uh, zero. Zero? You think everybody, everybody who's betting on anybody on state kings is losing money? I mean. Well, because most EV, of the, mar- most of the markup, like, like number one, you're, you're, the contests themselves are being raked. Yep. So, and, and mostly they're large field GPP, they're GPP, so it's at least. It's somewhere between eight and fifteen percent, and then the players are charging like a minimum of a twenty percent markup, and they're doing that specifically because Stake Kings takes like ten whatever percent of it, as it is. So they so so it's like how could how could any yeah. player be that be- much better than the field to beat the rake times two in the long run? Yeah, basically a lottery ticket then. But it's not even a lottery. Just, I mean, yeah, it's it's negative EV. I I to me, state kings type of thing uh, is very similar to uh, tailing people's bets in sports betting. Like I could understand, like like if uh, if one guy it's like, oh, I'm putting together an eight game parlay, uh, like because I think you could do on DraftKings Social or some of the. I mean, like I, I it's not legal here in my state, so, so the, I I don't know what the much of the the DraftKings FanDuel sportsbook all type of stuff looked like because yep. I can't get in. I can look at the lines and stuff. Uh, that you could put together a betting ticket, right? I could put together my little betting ticket and then share it with someone, and someone could be like, "Oh, I'm going to put five dollars on that betting ticket." No matter what I and then I can understand the entertainment value of Taylor. I, I'm I like that guy. I I I want a little bit of an a, his action. Instead of me bet, figuring out what to bet on, it's like, I don't even know what to bet on on Sunday football. Uh, give me his eight prop bets, and now I have something to sweat type of thing. Yeah. And and the now, normally, in the sports betting world, you don't have to pay a VIG for that. It's just right. like, it's the same, whatever line, well, obviously, you're not going to get the same lines that the, the person that you're tailing got, right? Because by the time you're betting it, the lines have moved. Uh, right. But at least you're rooting for the same thing. And it's like, okay, I could, uh, my favorite guy from YouTube, I could root with the same, uh, I get, I get that entertainment value. The same way in DFS, right? If, 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 if it's like, oh, I like so-and-so and they're selling 50% of their action or something in the Millie Maker on Sunday and I'm going to buy 2% of it and I'm not, pl- I'm, and I'm not playing in the Millie Maker, right? Like, and I'm, cause like, if you're going to play, just fucking play your own goddamn lineups then. Yeah. Right. But it's like, nope, I'll take 2% of it and then sweat their lineups. Right. As an entertainment product, I get it. Right. But as long as you understand that, that, that no one could be that good to beat the rake times two, essentially, or more, yeah. that even in live finals, because some people do that on State Kings or live okay. final, call, like they'll put little qualifiers and whatever, and you'll get 5% of their action. It's like, even then, you have to beat the at least in the live final. The, there's really no rake, right? right. Other other than the, the the travel package and you know the the setup and the the experience, yeah. which uh, you already know my thoughts on that. Uh, <laughs> but have, do we, have we talked about live finals? I, I was trying to remember if you and I. I feel like I talked with somebody at this live final about whether you would ever go to a live final. And my opinion was, I can't imagine Blender going to a live final. Oh, well, I've been to one as a as a. As a, like a VIP, I've been to the new 2019 yeah. baseball one, maybe, right? Okay. But that was on that was on, that by, by draft. I wasn't in the live final, but I was at the event. 
DraftKings invited you to a live final that you were not in. Yeah, no, because it was part of the the voice of the player committee. Oh yeah, yeah. They're right, because so they set up that thing, and and there was like ten of us, and DraftKings has an office in New York, so they wanted to give a presentation to us in person. So because obviously they were doing a live final that weekend, that was the easiest for all the relative parties in DraftKings to be in one place. So they basically said, come down, we'll pay for your airfare and hotel, put you up at the same hotel as everyone, Friday through Sunday. There was that Yankee game or whatever. We went to the, whatever, the the, the luxury box, that, whatever. I did what, everything that, that the live final people got for, as the experience I got other than not having an actual entry into yeah. the thing. And, so and like, I've been think? to did one, what the, right. I've been to the experience yep. and me, it's and did like, did you enjoy I, yourself or no? It was enjoyable, but it's not something I, I'm willing to pay money for. Yeah. So I, I will say for at least the, the live finals that I've been to, the price that they put on the ticket does not include like the hotels and all of the entertainment and stuff. It's only, it only includes the, uh, the ticket value. It does. Are you sure about that? Yeah, for the, for the tournament of champions that you. Oh, for the see. tournament of champions, but not for the not for the normal live finals. Really, I didn't know. I, I haven't looked because T- typically it says it's like you know like thirty thousand dollars plus you know ticket plus whatever. Yeah, and on it's, Fanduel, on Fanduel it says that. I don't know if it says it on DraftKings. No, it does on DraftKings. If you go to the okay. the, the, the details, and it and it, then in the parentheses it says of a total value of X seventy thousand okay. whatever, and then you go it's like well really the equity in the Live final is like fifty thousand per ticket, and it's like so that extra twenty thousand is like the experience, and uh, and you're taxed on that. Yeah, yeah, not not for DraftKings because they so for example last year forty of us got in and and the tickets are valued at twenty five thousand, so it didn't include any of the any. Right, of the but, but I think that's different. I think the tournament of champions type of stuff is different. Is it yeah. is 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 different? The smaller stuff. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't Someone know point out. Maybe either. maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. All I know is back in the day in 2000, 2018, 2019, it was it like you yeah. paid for the you paid for the experience as part of your ticket. Uh and I'm like, I I why don't we just do this and why are we at Chelsea Piers? Let's do this. Uh, we could do this somewhere cheaper. I don't need yeah. wait there were tuxedo waiters with little little appetizers and stuff. Do I do I need this? The best part that to me the 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 best part of live finals is Hanging out with all the people that you know their username or see on YouTube or something, yeah. and you're all in hanging out in one place. Like, it's well, finally, agree. Right, yeah. your your normal life, you don't have anyone to hang out with that knows anything about this shit. And now it's all now it's want to talk DFS, yeah. right, right, it's right. Great. So that's the but to me, it's like well, why don't we just organize this ourselves for right and not have to pay DraftKings to do this little thing for us. Yeah. So that that that's my that will I ever be at a live final? I do play qualifiers sometimes. Okay. When, when they ma- when they massively overlay. Right. But other than that, I I don't. People were talking. No. People are talking about me at the live finals. <laughs> well, it was just, I was talking about you with with one other person because we were talking about how I was on your podcast. Right. Might have been with uh, with you know Shrek four two two four. He's a yeah. I know guy. Shrek. Just yep. one a milli. Yeah. I think I was talking with Shrek about about you and about about whether you would ever go to a live final. Um, yeah. And, and well, I, well, no, it's more like, will I ever, uh, have a ticket to a live final event? Like, I don't mind right. going. I, if someone wants to have a plus one, I'll, I'll, I'll go hang out. Sure. That's no you problem. You want to put it. me down as a plus one and then pay for my plane and hotel. That's perfectly fine. I don't care. I'll go. Well, now, now that you've brought up, uh, whether all of those, the experiences are included in the price, I'm going to have to look into that and decide whether I want to play any more qualifiers. Because since the last turn of Champions, I've been like, well, that's sweet. This is all, all of this extra value is included and they, they don't include it in the price, but I've never actually gone back and looked at other tournaments to see if, if, the, if it is included. And I'll probably stop chasing if all of that, if all of the experience is included in the price. Right. Cause they'll put, they'll put that in, in your 1099, like. They put all that, they put the crown shit, they put a lot of shit in your 1099 that's like, oh, here's the value of some stuff. I'm like, really? Huh. I guess I got to look a little bit closer. Yeah, you got to you gotta look. Right? But also the, 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 also another reason why I don't play live final qualifiers is because a lot of it is a, it, it's a money sink. Right? I mean, it's... Oh, yeah. I've never won a ticket. On purpose. I've only won the Tournament of Champions, which comes as an add-on to winning a tournament. I've tried 
just since last year, just since the Tournament of Champions last year, I was like, well, that was pretty sweet. I want to do that again. Uh, so I've started chasing a little bit. I still don't do like all of them. Like a, a lot of people, I think that's a big part of what they do is trying to chase live finals. For me, it's kind of like if I want a little bit more on a slate, then I'll play them. And I have yet to win. I've come in second, I think, a handful of times, but not a handful, a couple of times. I've come in second or third, uh, but I've, I've never won one. So it's been a huge money sink for me. Right. But I mean... A lot of uh, many people, I mean, maybe now they do, but the smarter people realize that there are some people that make live finals come in fifth and have lost money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. It's For like, sure. oh, it, it, by the, all the money, they, they have five seats or something. And and the amount of money they put in, it's like, well, if I don't come in at least third, I've lost money. It's like, dude, I don't yeah. play normal GPPs that are like, I mean, like, why? Like, oh. like, why? Why? But that's that's my perspective. So I, I'm going to downplay the the importance of, like, hey, here here's a question. Want to like this? This is my biggest bugbear in, in in DFS. Not biggest. I have a lot of them. But uh, uh, biggest bug bug bugbear bugbear bug or pet peeve bugbear. Bug bear. Okay, I know pet peeve. I've never heard of a bugbear. A bugbear? You never heard of a bugbear? No. Let, let, am am I right. using the term right? That should be. Let's let's look up the. Difference. No idea. I mean, I knew what you meant as soon as you said it in the context, okay. but uh, but I never heard the term. Uh Okay, maybe it's maybe maybe I'm using it wrong. And actually, it's gone it's gone significantly down in usage by the Oxford languages over time. It's something that's the height of its usage is in like in the late 1800s. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Uh, it it you're means not, you're not helping your case of saying right. you're not a boomer. Uh, it's uh, a cause of obsessive fear, irritation, or loathing, and it's archaic. Uh, usage. It's an imaginary being invoked to frighten children, typically a sort of hobgoblin supposed to de devour them. Okay. So it's... Right. it's Learn something people, new every day. Am I the only one that uses this? I've literally never heard it before in my life. A bugbear? Bugbear. Let's... Uh, cool. uh, bugbear meaning. I, I wanna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look this up to see. How do you use bugbear in a sentence? No, no, okay. No, it's 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 used. Okay, I see examples of it. Okay, people do use it. A particular thing that annoys or... So in Cambridge English Dictionary, it's a particular thing that annoys or upsets you. Okay. But it, it comes from the archaic usage of some type of fucking children eating hobgoblin of some type. <laughs> That's fun. Right. It's fun history there. Right. So so we learned, learned some... Uh, All I'm, right. I'm showing my age. People are like, oh... So what's I, your I, biggest bugbear? Right, my biggest bug is... Uh, uh, Someone, someone that says they're a 24-time live finalist. Oh, yeah. That's like, like, well, did you win? Like, no. So, like, what does that matter? Like, <laughs> right. So what does that matter? Like, qualifying for a live final, okay. Like, let's say you've gone to 24 live finals and have never, ca never come in the top half. So you're right. telling me you're one of the lo most losingest players in DFS. Because how would you, Unless how would you be? they're getting those tickets on their first try. You never know. Right, you never. I mean, you're right. You never know. You do know, <laughs> but that's the, the to me. To me, saying X time live finalist is like it's like participation yeah. trophies. It's like I was, I was talking about this with uh, with Rinpak on. So he went uh, to the tournament of champions as Alex Baker's guest. Alex couldn't make it, but Rinpak went in his place, and he was saying that he's gotten. I think he got third in a live final and fifth in a live final. And of course, he's he's the one who's like, yeah, I just do terribly at live finals. Like I just I haven't, haven't had any success at live finals. And I'm like, you just, you've got third and you got fifth. And he's like, yeah, but like I put a lot of money in. And he, he's somebody who understands it. But uh, yeah, right. He was a good example of somebody who like he has done really relatively really well in live finals, but he's still like, yeah, I'm just not good at it. But still, kind of but I mean, yes, it's hard to qualify for them, and it's hard to win because it's it's very strong fields. But at yeah. the end of the day, just simply, simply, I mean, imagine, imagine uh, I'm playing a hundred man contest on FanDuel for the satellites into the Millie Maker, right? So like the, like the, the Millie Maker, let's say the Millie Maker of DraftKings is a $20 ticket and I'm playing uh, uh, quarter contests, right? They have qu a quarter satellite, right? To get, to get a ticket for the Millie Maker. And I've won five, I've won uh, 25 of them. Like that's about it. That's what's the difference between that and qualifying for five twenty? You won a hundred man contest, a winner take all hundred man contest to enter some other contest. Yeah. So like it's a satellite ticket. No one. Died. Imagine me putting on my uh, on my on my uh, Twitter bio. Uh, 
19,754th uh, satellite uh, winner, right? Time satellite <laughs> yeah. winner. Right? Like, I mean, I'd be impressed with your persistence. Right. Well, you never, I mean, who knows? I just jam them in or whatever, overlay, yeah. that type of stuff. Or like you, you get the like World Series of Poker, right? You play the $500 satellites. It's like, well, I've, I've, I've won 52 satellites to the World Series of Poker. It's like, well, what did you do in the actual World Series of Poker? Nope, nope, never even made the last day. It's like, so who cares? So what is it? What does that matter? So you want a coupon? Like, what is that? Like, that's that's my bugbear. That I, Neil, what I want the people that 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 do that, I want I want to be eaten by hobgoblins. <laughs> I want I want I'm, them to be eaten by bugbears. I'm gonna go add two-time tournament champions participant to my bio on Twitter. <laughs> Yeah, but Just, no, 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 no. I, I'm going to put the uh, number one. I have to put my. Uh, that's going to be the title of this episode: "Eaten by Bugbears." Uh, <laughs> I like it. In order to make the tournament of champions, you had to have won a large field GPP. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's, yeah, that's true. That's true. Okay, so like to me, that's that you've you've entered the luxury phase. So the fact sure. that you made the tournament of champions twice, regardless of what you did in the tournament of champions, that is an accomplishment. Okay, sure. You didn't win some satellite ticket. You literally won a Millie Maker. <laughs> I mean, right, yeah. So yeah, like, it's a little bit different. But well, also well, that in and of itself isn't isn't an impressive feat. It's a an add on to winning something else. Right. So do, yeah, do you think it's I, more? I got what you're saying. Do you think it's more impressive to say two time Millie win- winner or two time Tournament of Champions participant? Uh, two time Millie winner for sure. Yeah, of course, right. So yeah, that's yeah. the same thing with the so the fact that you wouldn't put down that you got a participation trophy twice. Right, right, right. Yeah. I, right. Why would you put down I got it twenty four times and never won? Right. And to be clear, I am not a two time Millie Millie winner. So how'd you get your it. second te- tournament of champions thing? Well, I split it. See, I, I as somebody who's won outright one Millie, I have to be an elitist about this. You can't split it. It's not a Millie if you split it. Yeah. So you don't. You're not like Davis who. Uh, him and 854 people won some Millie showdown on FanDuel or something? No, because because I won one outright. So now I've become an elitist about it. Before that, then maybe I would have agreed with him. Yeah, I've, I've won the Millie five times. I split so many ways. I won $4,000. But uh, but then after you win one, you have to become more elitist. And you say, no, that's, it's not a Millie if you split it. Okay, so when you split that second one, then you had like a tiebreaker tournament to get into the Tournament of Champions. Yeah. And then what, what, did you split it just two ways or three ways or how many ways? Uh, four ways. Okay. So technically you won 200, about a little over 250000 for that tournament. Yep. And then played a, that played a basically a four-man on who gets the TOC ticket. Yep. So you could put that on your ticket. You could put that on your butt. One, one. Uh, Bio, you, bios only get so long. Well, then you get, get the extra. Go, do, 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 do a link tree thing. Do a little profile. Right. Yeah. Right. Good idea. But then you could say you're a, you're a one time four man uh, tiebreaker TOC winner. That's true. Right. That's true. Yeah. Does it does you it matter? No matter what you said, does anyone care? Nobody gives a shit. I don't. Th- I mean, if you say two time Millie Maker winner, then that's kind of cool. I, I appreciate that. I respect that. No, but I'm saying the only I think the only people that care are the people that are stupid enough to not realize what we're talking about. Sure. Right. But then then but but. That's a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> right, but that's a lot. Dude, I do dude, I do a show in the morning where I, I would say at least once a month, someone that I've never seen before comes into the YouTube chat and says, and says, have you ever won the Millie before? And when I say no, they're like, why do I, then why should we listen to you? Right. What's the point of listening to Blender? Right. Hasn't even won the Millie. Right, hasn't even won the Millie. A contest that I almost never play. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's See, Alex can't, can't, uh, Alex can't, uh, now he can answer that, yes. Yeah, right. Right, even though his mill, I, see, see, there, there's, there's the little, there's the, there's a little bugbear. I got a little hobgoblin on my shoulder. Winning the milli of a four, of a $4,000 entry contest, to me, that's not that, to me, Neil, you're the real milli winner. Thank you, yeah. I, yeah, I put myself on a, definitely a higher pedestal than Osimo, that's for sure. Because no, no, winning a twenty dollars Millie Maker with like four with three hundred thousand entries or whatever, a lot more impressive than. I mean, it's a lot more luck, really. <laughs> well, sure, well, saying. sure. Ob- yeah. at, at, yeah. that's actually sure. the truth, right? It's actually yeah. less skill, and it's just like I just happen to get lucky that one day. Yeah, exactly. But it's still more. But to say that you beat four hundred thousand people or something is better, better than than uh, it's a twenty thousand sure. dollar Millie, right? Like, like, sure. dude. It's, 
You won an 80 person sense, contest. In that sense, there are a lot of people who have done the nickel and dime contest who have beat more people than I have in that Millie Maker. Yes. And that's more impressive than my Millie Maker, but nobody's given them credit for it. No, yeah, no. If you told me that, if someone told me there were a four time uh, NFL main slate Mini Max winner, I'd say that they're the best player in the world. I mean, like, then, yeah. then it's like. But that's you. But again, that, that's you. That's not the common person. The common person isn't going into YouTube chat and saying, well, have you ever won the, the dime or what, what's it called? The uh, dime time uh, or the, the whatever, the mini max. The, the mini max. Yeah, yeah. Right. Have you ever won the mini max? Nobody's or, going into YouTube chat saying, have you ever won the mini max? Or even the, the $4 20 max or whatever, the $3 with 20 max, the play action. It's typically bigger than the Millie on DraftKings, so it's like if you won, if you've won that multiple times, I think two two things. Number one, very skillful, and also extremely coming from me, extremely too conservative with your bankroll. Because if you could yeah, win yeah. that four times, you could win the Millie four times. Why yeah. aren't you, why aren't you increasing your bankroll? Because that is very true. Right. Well, what is the top price for that though? I think a hundred thousand. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah. Then, then you could move up. Yeah. Right. We're not talking you know, about the, the, the week that I won the Millie, somebody in the mini max, I believe had a higher score than I did or in one of the other tournaments had a higher score than I did. And you're glad they didn't so, play that day. Right? I was really glad they didn't play the Millie. Yeah, exactly. Right. And I had the, I had the opposite thing in the slant where my, my, my score won in the slant, but what it came in second in the Millie. And then people are acting know, like, money. right. Like second, seconds, a hundred thousand. And I won 50,000. They're like, yeah. do you feel like you lost fifty thousand? It's like, dude, I don't, I don't play that contest. Like, I did not. Yeah. Right. Yes, it would have feel. It would have been a little bit. My answer would have been slightly different if my score would have won the won the first place. Yeah. Slightly yeah. different because a hundred thousand to fifty thousand is like, yeah, but who I just cares? don't, I just don't yeah. play the millies. Right. I, I like, mean, it so, sucks, but who cares? Yeah. Right. It sucks, but who cares? But like when it would have been first in the millie, and it's like, if I just would have committed to playing the millie every week, I would have a million dollars right now. Yeah. Even though I would have lost like like fifteen hundred dollars a week, like for three years in order to do that, but I don't. But I, I don't. I don't think in those terms. But to me, a lot a lot of average to below average DFS players do think like that. Yeah. For when sure. you get the when I get questions. It's like, oh, uh, if you're going to play different contests, you play different entries into them. Like me and you tend to play unique entries, and we're like, well, what happens if they're in the wrong contest? It's like, dude, my goal on any given night is to win one of them. And whatever one it happens to be, I'm fine with. I'm not going to go back and go, well, what happens if that lineup was in that contest? Like, like, dude, like, I'd rather have the diverse exposure and try to win one. But the, the caveat that I tell them is that I, the first place in any contest that I enter has to be worth the volume that I'm entering. Yep. So I don't want yeah. the, the I, don't, I don't want the content. Like, if I'm playing tonight's fifteen dollar luck box in in NBA. I'm also going to play the four dollar twenty max. I'm also going to play the, the the jab step. I'll play like four entries into the six dollar five k to first, right? Yeah. And five dollar five k to first. So it's like if I win first place in anything, the minimum I'm going to win is five thousand dollars, and I'm playing like seven hundred dollars worth of volume. Yeah. Okay. Then That's I'm reason. not going to yeah. complain if that lineup that can't, that won me at five thousand would have won me a hundred thousand. It's just. Just whatever it happened to be in, it happened to be in. I can't control that type of thing. But I'm not going to just. I, I'm not going to enter a twelve dollar contest that pays five hundred to first place and then throw that in and be like, yeah, "Well, yeah. I won that and I lost money." Like I like it's same. it's never going to be that. I entered to minimize the possibility of disappointment. So same kind of thing. I mean, for me, it's a little bit higher volume. So it's like I I usually don't play contests unless it's at least like. 40,000 at first because I'm playing enough volume that it's like, right. I don't want to win 10,000 on a slate that I had 10,000 in play and be disappointed because I had it in the wrong contest. Right. Right. But that's, uh, so that's just, all relative to your, the, to the size of volume. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like that, that's, that's what I mean. Like if, if you're only playing a hundred dollars worth of volume, then a thousand to first is fine. I mean, like that, that that's perfectly, yeah. perfectly fine. But if you're playing $10,000 worth of volume and you're playing contests where first place is 5,000 bucks, like then, yeah, what's, what's the point? Right, then don't play unique lineups. Just just play your 150 set and double enter in those yeah, contests. Exactly. Agreed. That's what I would do. And if you win those, make sure you, you know, even if you lost money, you have to put that in your Twitter bio. Of course. Always. Right. right. Everything goes in the Twitter bio. Everything goes on the Twitter. Every time you every time you qualified or mentioned something or 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 one of one of the I said the satellite tickets. 
Like, yeah. <laughs> see, that would be funny. I should I should change my like I, I like you what's in my bio. But you'd have to find all of your satellite tickets to figure. Do you out think people are checking this shit? Probably I could make up a number, right? True. True. Right, it's satellite tickets, right? I don't think I even know what your uh, current Twitter bio is. I, I don't think I've read it in a while. No, it's it's just explanatory. What DFS player, host of yeah. this, do that. I put wrestling fan in. I took because I don't because the the advanced sports analytics show is over for the NFL season, so I okay. leave it in the bio and I have a space there. So being yeah. that I that I at least I tweet something about wrestling every once in a while, just I put that. That's my my. Well, why are you ta- tweeting about this? Well, it's in my bio. So but why don't you fucking read it? I used to, I didn't, I, 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 I put former comedian, I used to have comedian and I would tell Joe, I would say uh, funny things and people are like, you know, take me seriously. It's like, I would zoom into like little profiles. Like it says comedian uh, here. It says, yeah, it says comedian. But you change it, you change it to former. So you can't say funny things anymore. It doesn't mean I'm, I'm what, it just, just because I'm a former comedian doesn't mean I can't be funny anymore. <laughs> well, I assume we can take everything you say seriously now. Uh, you probably can't. <laughs> Is, is that, can you take anything that any DFS player takes seriously on Twitter? No. No. For the most part, not. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's most almost funnier when you when you, when you tri- when people think that you're serious and then they act like you're like they act like you're serious. Right. Right. Because a lot of times, like my, my favorite thing is like uh, uh, especially in like Discord, some random fucking person goes off, and I'm like, imagine not playing that guy, right? And then you'll get two or three people. It's like, like. How come you never told us to play that? Like something like how much of him? And I'll I'll make up some fucking stupid thing. Denzel Valentine goes off for forty two points. Imagine playing Denzel. Imagine not playing, or imagine fading Denzel Valentine. And then I'll say I have eighty three percent of him. And he's like he's like point four percent owned. And then yeah. someone will bite and go really. Why did you no, of course that? not. The fucking the guy that's projected for fucking eight eight fantasy uh, the eight minutes of play that got in only because some guy got injured in the first quarter. No, of course yeah. not. <laughs> Come on, what are we do- what are we talking about here? Or I, I'd mention exposures like that, and they would add up to way past a hundred. Right, it's like, come on, like obviously, I I don't have sixty two percent of the fourth wide receiver of the fucking fucking Washington football team that is point one percent on that has thirty eight points. Like I don't know, I don't. That's a joke. So you're you're making me think of the the one other thing that I talked about with Shrek about you is that you seem to have kind of infinite patience. I mean, for somebody, but I don't, I don't. Stupid Saturdays, you spend a lot of time teaching people and trying to make people better. I, I don't mind teaching people that want to learn. Sure. If you once once it's once once you come across as not wanting to learn, then I have no patience for you. Yeah. Right. So that that to, to me, it's uh, two sides of the spectrum. People say, "Oh, I you have somebody, a lot of patience." I I really don't. I had somebody in my Twitter DMs a month or so ago saying, "Hey, I, I'd like to talk with you about DFS." And one of the like the, the second day that they started asking me questions, they said, "So it looks like uh, LeBron James is out tonight." Does that mean that I shouldn't play him? <laughs> and I just, I just never responded. So that, that was point, the question. Like, you haven't read the rules. That was a question that somebody asked me in my DMs, and I was like, I'm not going to respond in part because I'm not sure. Are you just trolling me? Like, I'm, I'm right. not going to participate in this. But I don't know. I don't know if they're trolling or if this is a real like, they don't understand how DFS works at all, and they think that I'm just going to tell them who to play. I, I was baffled. So I just, I thought, the, I thought your the the, quest, the response would be LeBron James is out. Uh, who do I, pl- now that I know that, who do I play? And then my response would be like, that's why you fucking look at model. Like the, this, this, this is what I don't have patience for. It's like, right. there's, you don't have to ask me. You could just look at stuff to figure that stuff out yourself within a half a second. I'm not going to Google it for you, but I would never have heard like a guy's injured. Does that mean I don't play the injured player? Right. It's like, well now, now you've really done now, now, I, I, can you tie your shoes? I mean, right, right. Like now, now you're at the point of like I don't know. Don't play games without reading the rules first, without having right. under any concept of what you're doing. Yeah, but I tend to be I tend to be a little bit patronizing when it comes to those. I would have continued until the okay. person thought I was a complete asshole, <laughs> right? Because I would have, I would have said I said how many how many points fantasy points will LeBron James get if he doesn't play today? And they would go zero. I said, well, it, it isn't what. Uh, is the point of the game to score more than zero points in a slot? Well, yes. He said, so then, then do you think you should play a player 
no matter what their salary is, that is guaranteed to score zero points. Right. And then I would hope their answer is, you're right, thank you, and then they go away <laughs> forever. <laughs> yeah. You would hope. No, but I have no problem. Like, in, 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 uh, in the Road Roto-Grinders Discord, I've known for, like, I've, I've had six-hour-long conversations, like, and going through step-by-step step, a teaching process of do this, do this, but also my teaching style is very rigid. Only because people, I try to, I try to make things very linear. Because I, if, if you don't know how to think non-linearly, then I, you have to keep everything lit. Like so, you're going through and going really, it's like don't think of anything else. And I'm just going to ask you questions and go, okay, this and this, which would be better, A, B, or C? C. Why would C be better? Because blah blah blah. And then they would start mentioning, well, well what happens if this guy's going to be more owned? It's like don't even think about anything else, please. You're, let's go one we'll by go one time. down down the path and if you're if you want to learn I think I I think I'm a very good teacher but if you once you show the sign of like nah I'm, I think that's bullshit it's like right with, with, with no nothing or whatever like you know once once people start talking about yeah but the numbers don't mean anything it's like okay then then just, right. just, just go go put everyone's name in a hat and pick whatever you want at this point right right. Or, or, or when they get stuck, sometimes people get stuck, like, like if you don't understand, like, the concept of expected value, like, I can't, I, there's nothing further I can help you with. I'm sorry. Like, if you don't understand the concept of expected value and you don't understand the concept of variance, like, there's nothing else I could teach you. There's, no, there's nothing, like, if you don't understand, like, cause I, cause I, they're, they're, hey, I've tried to help people. That I give them, I give them the, the, the six-sided die question and they, they get it wrong. And I go, how is it? It's a six sided die, right? I'm going to give you, if, if you bet, if you bet on, uh, on, uh, six, I'll give you eight to one odds. If you bet on two, I'll give you three to one odds. Like, which one would you bet on? It's like, oh, I've been on three. I'm like, why? And they don't even know why. I'm like, like, dude, you don't even know the bait. Like coin that some people got the coin flip answer wrong. And I go, I can't, I can't do this. All right. I, that, that's when, that's when I start not having patience. Like, so you're telling me that if we played this game over and over, like, I'm going to give you two to one if you win, and you're going to give me even money if I win. And you're like, which side of the coin do I take? Uh, heads. It's like, why heads? It said, and they go, why not? I said, Have, why not tails? And then you go, I have no idea what you're talking about. Like, and I'm like, it doesn't matter which side of the fucking coin you pick. Don't, don't you get the concept? You're going to get paid. It's 50-50. It's like, that. that's... That's why. That's why when Shrek says he's like, "Oh, I have infinite pay I don't have infinite yeah. patience. Well, it sounds like you kind of do, though. I mean, just the fact that you go over all these things and you keep going when people. I mean, I, I get it. You, you only do it with people who are trying to learn, trying to be good players. So, but you have infinite patience with those people, right? With, with those people, people who right? Want to learn. Yeah. And then, or or just highlighting like variance. A lot of times, uh, people just don't understand how high variance sports could be, and I'd be like, right. Because someone, because someone will come to me and go, I, I, I took your course. I get all the stuff that you're saying. I've been playing for three weeks, and I've lost every slate. Yeah. And I go, I got, and my response is, you could quite possibly be the greatest DFS player ever. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? It's like losing for, for losing 21 slates in a row. Yeah, that's nothing. That's nothing. <laughs> it's not nothing. Like, but like we all do it. Like everybody, right. everybody goes through. 21 slate stretches of losing. Right. Right. And I didn't even ask what contest they're playing or just, just, but just understanding that fact of like, like, especially in NFL, because it happens most likely in NFL. Cause right. they, it's like, I'm only playing 18 slates or 20 slates. So it seems like I had a really bad season, right? I lost money on 19 out of 20 slates and I lost mo- like, like, dude, that's three weeks of baseball, dude. I've gone three weeks of baseball straight down. Like, yeah. like, <laughs> like that's no, that, Right. You could be the goes. greatest player there is. Yeah. And then, but their their question like, how do I know if I'm doing something wrong? I, I don't. And in three weeks sample size. Yeah, you wait. Wait until you have a bigger sample size. Right. And that's why I always go back to the point of study sharper players. Right? Yeah. If your lineups look at least remotely close to a bunch of sharper players, at least that's a signal. Is it the good best signal? No. But if you're going in, if you if you, you look at your line, I mean, I've looked at some people's. Look, some people have sent it it's like, "Oh, I've been playing for three months and and I'm doing horribly." I'm like, "Okay, yeah. can you send me?" And they're and they're trying a 150, which is always a bad sign. Uh, 
because they're using the optimizer. I'm using everything that, uh, that and I, I know how this is going to turn out. And then I have them send me their 150 sets. It's like I want to see your lineups uh, because a lot of times they're playing. They're, a lot of times they're playing in the mini max. I can't even see the contests, uh, and they'll send it to me or they'll show me that you. Uh, they're playing the the fifteen dollar whatever, and they're playing fifty line, and so they're in there. I can look in results DB and see their lineups, and there are several people that have sent me stuff that I I look at it and go, I don't even know how you got to these lineups. Like I just don't even understand how how you even like. Your 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 top lineup projects twenty six points below optimal. Like how how did you how did you even get to these? Like that like did you even look at try, like you would look and you see a guy that is is one point four percent owned in contests. That person has fifty eight percent of them, right? Yeah. And then you look at sharper players and they and and like I go through twenty sharper players lineups and eighteen out of twenty has literally zero of them. And then two have like 2%, right? Like thrown in. And like you have 58% of this guy. And then you look at the next, they look at the next 43% of a guy that's 9% owned. And most sharp players have like 4% of that guy. It's like, and then you go to a slate before that and it's very similar. You start seeing these similar things and you go, go, you're so, like, I didn't even have to play these slates to know. Just, I could just look at 20 sharp players and look at your exposures versus theirs. Yeah. And go like you're nowhere near anyone here. You're like you're not like it's not like you did some weird thing where it's like oh I'm paying down a small forward that no one else is doing. So you may have right. a little bit more of the cheaper small forwards, but you're still kind of and a lot. You're still kind of there. Using an optimizer, I don't even know. That, that, that's the point that I'm making. Like I don't even know. Yeah. I do not know how you got to this. I don't yeah, know how how the, I, I don't know how you came up with these. That this is why you're losing. Your lineups are horrible. I've heard some some very good players at Osimo say don't change the projections in, in the optimizer. And that's probably a good advice for that kind of player. <laughs> like, but that's what, the, I, but he couldn't even, he, that the specific person, like I remember that this like maybe a year or so ago, couldn't even tell me what they were doing. I was legitimately oh. interested. Like I would love to help you. I, I don't even know how you get to these lineups. So please tell me how you're doing this. Couldn't even explain it to me. Huh? So I basically said, I, I'm making, I'm doing the, all these build rules, and I'm, I'm, I'm I, I watch your show. Like, how do you watch my stuff and get to any of the? I mean, just like, like I don't understand. It's like I, these lineups. I would say, and I say these lineups are absurdly too contrarian. Yeah. Even for the large field contest, their projections are so low. Like, why you? Like, how did you get to this? I just like how. Probably just a fundamental misunderstanding of how to use an optimizer would be my guess. So maybe they understand the game theory in terms of if they're hand building. But then maybe just don't know how to use the optimizer. Would be, but not for a projection thing. Like I can understand. See, see, Neil, I can understand because I've had the other also, where someone sends me their 150 set and I look through, and essentially they're playing like 150 very like cash. They're playing like heavy chalk, which is in in NBA especially like a lot of times maybe you lean more towards that. But uh, you look and he's like. Their top, their, their their first lineup is literally my cash lineup, right? Their second lineup is like someone else's cash lineup. Like you look through, and it's like you're you're jam- and they're jamming in like five of the chalkiest guys into every single lineup, and then kind of slightly differentiating there. And I go, yeah, you, you're probably not losing all that much, but you're you're probably not going to win these large field GPPs with this. And I can at least understand that because the optimizers are there. To yep. you know, as a knapsack problem to solve for the highest fantasy f points column project whatever. So I can understand how you could get to that. So that yeah. if it was that, I could be like, okay, now we have to start talking about leverage and ownership, right? Because you're obviously not doing enough of that stuff. But the opposite way, where you're getting lineups where the best way 150 lineups are projecting 25 to 50 points below like any other lineup in the contest, and I and I I just I. I how does an optimizer even come up with it? Unless, unless they're putting in, like, like oh, I want my total ownership to be thirty, right? Right, and, and it's they like, they, yeah. but they wouldn't even tell me that. They, I don't know, because some of their lineups would still have chalk, and it's like it couldn't be that low, because some of their lineups would still have like one or two chalk pieces, and then like guys that are like, like project that. I mean, like he, this person had like a good three to like anywhere from two to 4%, somewhere in that range of like guys that projected for 12 points. 
<laughs> like guys that were like only projected to play 15 minutes. So we're talking about like deep ninth guy types and not have like one in a bunch of lineups because someone's out and maybe the rotation goes that way. No, it's just like bench, like just a smattering of like every lineup has like two of these like, like if they, yes, if there's a blowout, maybe this guy gets 28 minutes in a blowout. But other than that, he's going to get, tw- he's going to get two six minute rotations. Right. And have a fun and, and be like Tony Snell. And it's like, yeah. you have like 14 of these guys in your player pool and like two of these guys and they're, and they're, and they're both like sub 1% owned. I, and I, 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 I don't know how you get, I, I just like, please tell me. And I, I never got and then an email three days go by. I don't even hear a response back. Oh, okay, I guess I guess you solved it. Yeah, right. hopefully. You still see that username around? No, well, I never seen I've never seen him at the top or anything. <laughs> That's what I'm asking. Yeah. Right. I guess they didn't keep with it. So it, it may, maybe me describing that I'm going through other people's 150 sets via email. Maybe yeah. maybe Shrek's right. I do have infinite patience. Yeah, right. <laughs> I think so. Sounds like it to me. Why? Why? Why can't they? Ha- what, isn't that the point of this? Podcast? There's nothing wrong with it. Good right? for you. I right. say good for you. I I consider myself a pretty patient man, and I do not have your patience. I don't think. I, I think I I'll respond a few times, but I don't think that I would go back and forth to the extent that you do with the number of people that you do. Oh, I DM in conversations all the time. I know. That's right. Impressive. Good. Right, for you. but I I think that I think the difference between me and you is that when you lose your patience. You just kind of disconnect. Yeah. And when I lose my patience, I just lash out at people. <laughs> yeah, right. I think that is one of the differences. I think that's the difference. I think I have a lot more patience than you, but when I don't have the patience, that's when people going. are like, wow, Jordan, what a, what a dick. <laughs> yeah. Right? Well, I come from Brooklyn, so you're going to get you're gonna get that really sarcastic. It's just like, built what? in. Right, yeah, just built in. Like, what the fuck are you, a fucking idiot? Come on. <laughs> don't waste my time. How do you not get this shit? Right? Yeah. How do you tie your shoes? I mean, because that, that's that, a lot of times that's what I say, right? Like, dude, they're, they're, I, I, dude, if we met, I wouldn't trust you to drive me in your car, <laughs> right? So, like, what do you mean by that? It's like, like I can't see how someone that is, that, I, I wouldn't trust you to be able to drive a car correctly, right? And then, and then of course, I'm talking to some like 52 year old guy or whatever yeah, right. like that. And I'm like, no, no, I think you're that stupid. I, and then he got, no, you're just exaggerating. It's like, no, you, you don't, you don't understand uh, the the depths of my mind of how I view people. That once I think you're an idiot, I really think you're an idiot. No coming back. <laughs> there's, there's no coming back. <laughs> Poor guy. Uh, he, you know that that guy should be eaten by bugbears. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I'm gonna so at least at least we got something productive. We found out the actual true definition of bugbear. Yeah, I feel like that's probably the most important thing that we've taught anybody. <laughs> Definition of bugbear. Right. New new term to use. Right. Davis is going to have a field day when he he always thinks that I'm 87,000 years old. I'm using a term that was most used in the late 1800s. Yeah. That's pretty good. <laughs> uh, so who do, who do you got in PJ this uh, this coming week? Uh, you you don't even know yet cuz you're going to build a lot. I don't know who's playing. I don't know who's playing. I'll find out. The morning of, most likely, maybe the night before, who's playing? I'll do my forty-five minutes of due diligence and create some lineups, and we'll we'll go from there. But but you're you you are you are a a one and a half time millimaker maker runner. One and a quarter. One and a quarter. Okay, one and a quarter. Yeah, see, that would be truthful. That would be fine. Yeah, I could say that. Right, and but a two time tournament of champions participant. That's true. Right. Yep. Or finalist. Is that better? Yeah, I guess I'm a finalist. Right. If everybody's a finalist, I am. Okay. Uh, player Q DFS on Twitter. Uh, NC or Field 8K if you want to study stuff on uh, Results DB or Lineup Rewind or whatever. You could go do that. I'm obviously at Blender HD on everything. And uh, you could always get the Theory of Daily Fantasy Sports. It's a 15-hour audio DFS masterclass. You can pick up at theoryofdfs.com.